Hey, 102 students, I got a uh, question here um, that involves actually two questions from chapter 12 as you guys are uh, preparing for uh, the exam. Uh, let me try number uh, 30 here first. I'll, I'll read it here. But uh, number sa 30 says, Mountaineers often carry altimeters that measure the altitude by measuring the atmospheric pressure. If a low pressure weather system moves in, will the altimeter report an altitude that is higher or lower than your true altitude? Explain. Okay, so let's talk about uh, atmospheric pressure. Maybe I uh, put kind of the curvature here of the Earth. So here's the Earth, and maybe we'll take this fictitious giant mountain here on, on the Earth or for that matter, airplanes, the same uh, idea. But we know that the air gets thinner, or the whole point of this chapter here is that as you go higher up, or maybe I should say the reverse, as you go lower in a fluid, so let's consider the top of the atmosphere way up here, the conceptual problem, or the conceptual answer that we, we learned here in this chapter is that the the deeper you go, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> choking. The the deeper you go in a fluid, and in this case it would be the atmosphere, the greater the pressure is. So so down here near the uh, sea level, I'll say, uh, we would have a high pressure. Uh, I know there's places we can go lower than sea level, but. Most places, it's, hard, it's harder to get below sea level, but pretty easy to get to sea level. So this would probably be the highest pressure you can have. And as you would go up the mountain, meaning you're not as deep in the fluid, you would get to a lower pressure. And a barometer then can be used, um, which a barometer measures the air pressure, can be used as an altimeter. An altimeter tells you then the, the height. So there's a direct correlation between this air pressure and how, how high you go. Uh, now, here's where it gets interesting. The atmosphere is not this static fluid like I was showing you guys in class where I had my aquarium and I just had the water sitting in the aquarium. And so if you were to go down in the aquarium, the pressure would increase. And it wouldn't really matter where you went, it would be the same thing. But the Earth's atmosphere is moving around. It's constantly pushing air from high pressures to low pressures. So it's always trying to reach equal pressure. But because of the sunlight, which has to do with the angle uh, that the sunlight hits, you can have warming effects more in, say, the tropics than higher latitudes or lower latitudes if you're going southern. Uh, but if you're going northern, um, you tend to get more sunlight uh, near the equator. And, and that tends to warm it a little bit more, and that tends to push the molecules. <clears throat> and my point is that <clears throat> there are pockets of air, and if you ever look at, say, a, a, a weather map of uh, Washington, Oregon, California, maybe I'll put San Francisco here, uh, San Diego Bay here, uh, Baja, California, uh, Mexico, uh, maybe I'll do the United States border, and then we got kind of a complicated coastline for Canada, um, so maybe I'll just do the United States, and so what do we have, the Great Lakes, this one up here is a superior uh, it'll go down in Lake Erie and Ontario. And, uh, well, anyways, St. Lawrence Seaway. Somewhere in here is Maine and coming down the East Coast. Uh, the United States border, uh, I guess, would swing down. And so here's Texas and here's Florida. Anyways, here's what I'm getting at is in general, then we tend to, say, get a storm and low pressures tend to represent storms. I know that's not part of this problem. 
but low pressure often then means the air is light, so it rises as it rises. Uh, the pressure even you know, goes lower and the air expands and then it cools and so the moisture turns into clouds and cools enough you get rain and so uh, there tends to be these low pressures so let's say we had a storm typical in the United States coming out of the Gulf of Alaska it will then blow across and so our storms tend to move from west coast to east coast and so as you you know watch the news they'll they'll say hey tornado warnings here in Texas and Oklahoma and then the next day, be careful with them in North Carolina, and then the snow's going to hit in D.C. Any, anyways, it moves across. But, but here's the point of this. This low pressure um, and high pressures are not constant. So if you take a uh, barometer and treat it as an altimeter, as long as this high pressure stays here, there'll be a drop. In fact, the drop from high pressure to low pressure, let's just say you go up about 2,000 feet uh, up the mountain, or let's make it bigger, 2,000 meters, there'll be a drop from a high pressure to a low pressure. Now, that drop will be about the same whether or not you started during a time where there was a high pressure or a low pressure. So, so the neat thing about these altimeters is you can start the day and you can know your altitude that you're starting at and you turn the little dial and you adjust it there and as long as the air pressure stays high or it stays low and as you go up the mountain it'll give you an accurate reading because there's the same drop uh, you may start at a lower pressure during a low pressure day but it's still going to drop the same amount when you go up to 2,000 meters or at least roughly the same amount so they work well but here's where altimeters that are based upon air pressure can get misleading. What if during the day you're climbing up the mountain, or even if you don't climb, but what if you just set it that morning and say, hey, this is a day of rest, and so I'm, I, you know, I've been hiking, uh, now I need to rest my body before my next big hike, and so you're, you're camping, and maybe that morning you set your altimeter, but you set it when there's high pressure, so maybe we'll say you're in the Rockies here, and, and, and so then the, the low pressure comes in, that low pressure is going to be a change because of weather patterns. It's not a change because you went higher up. And so what it'll look like is it'll look like you went, you went up. It looks like you're at a higher altitude. You haven't. Uh, in this case, the pressure changed because of the weather, weather pattern, not because you actually went higher. So using an altimeter that is based upon air pressure... Uh, normally can work really well unless a storm moves through. And so a good mountaineer needs to, to know that. Well, I'm probably saying too much about this. Let's go back to the question. It says, if a low pressure weather system moves in. So just because the pressure drop due to the low, uh, the, the, the pressure drop due to a weather system, it's going to give you a false reading that you're too high. And there it says, it says, will the altimeter report an altitude that is higher or lower than the true? And so I guess the answer is higher. It will drop the pressure, not because you actually went up the mountain, but it dropped the pressure because the air moving in was at low. So particularly a pilot needs to be careful with this. Uh, they're really good at making sure that before they take off, they adjust their altimeter. Uh, there's always uh, a reading painted on the uh, runway that says what is the altitude of that particular airport. And so you set it. And of course, you check your weather. And uh, if you recognize, as in most cases, the weather pattern isn't going to go from high to low on that particular day, uh, especially an amateur pilot, you just probably won't even go up that day. But because it's bringing in a storm front, but knowing that the pressure is going to stay there that day, you can trust the altimeter all day long and then know what your reading is. But if you also take off and maybe fly from Colorado to San Francisco, you might cross this boundary, and keeping that in mind means you, you got to be 
careful uh, on how you read your uh, altimeter. It may give you a, a false, false reading. All right, well, I probably babbled on a little too much about number 30, but hopefully that not only answered the question, but took it a little deeper. Uh, let's do number 53 together. Uh, 53 says, if you have two cubes that are the same size, one is made out of aluminum, but the other is made out of lead. All right, so let me kind of draw a square. Well, I'll try to make a 3D cube here. All right, so here's my cube, and it's made out of aluminum. Um, let's draw another cube. And uh, what did this say? Lead, so PB here. All right, so I've got one out of aluminum and, and one out of uh, lead. Uh, so you have two cubes, same size. So hopefully they look roughly the same size there. Um, where'd it go? Same, same size. Uh, one is made out of aluminum, the other is made out of lead. Both cubes are lowered into... Uh, both cubes are allowed, sorry, to sink to the bottom of a water-filled aquarium. All right, so we've got this aquarium. And a comparison here, another aquarium. Uh, both of them are going to sink. We talked about when things sink and float. I believe, if I remember right, density of aluminum is about a 2.7 grams per cubic centimeter. Uh, lead, wow. Uh, I'm going to 11... 11... Hmm. 11.6, 11.3, not real sure, but I'm pretty sure it's in the 11 range. But I'm sure the author picked this saying that the density and the material is dramatically different. Lead is dramatically different than aluminum. Uh, you can see that in the numbers. But both of them are greater than one, and so if you put them in the aquarium, they will completely sink. Okay. So I've put them in the aquarium, they sink in. The question then says, which cube, if either, experiences the greatest buoyant force and, and why? So the Archimedes principle simply says that this buoyant force is equal to the weight of the displaced fluid. Okay, so looking at the uh, aluminum, and of course, notice it doesn't say anything about what the material is. The buoyant force is just equal to the fluid that's displaced. So this placed water, but notice that the lead displaced water also, and it's the same volume of water. So it would be the same weight of water. So, so both of these would have the same buoyant force, because the buoyant force is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced. It doesn't matter the material, it matters what's been displaced. And so in this case, we're displacing water, but both cases, and we're displacing the same volume of water. Therefore, it must weigh uh, the same. Uh, as you know, density is mass over volume. And if I'm talking about the density of these two water, the fluids, not, not, not the material itself, I can say that the amount of mass of water displaced would be the density of water times the volume that's been displaced. So in both cases, the density of the water is the same. Okay, again, I'm not talking about the material. And then the density, or excuse me, and the volume is the same. So those two multiplied together is going to tell me the amount of mass that's been displaced, which if we then multiply by G, we get the weight that has been displaced. And so both of these would calculate out to be the, the same value. Which, this is a conceptual question, so we don't have to answer the part of, of how much is it. Uh, but this is how we would calculate it. We take the density of the fluid. Again, that's always the challenging one on this one. And so, let me give you a hint towards the exercises where you have to do your calculations. Uh, I think one of the harder things about this chapter is knowing which density to use. Are we doing the density of the fluid or are we doing the density of the object that is placed in the, the fluid? Uh, same thing with volume. Are we talking about the volume of the object or are we talking about the volume that's been displaced? Now, of course, if something sinks, 
the volume of the object and the volume displaced are the same. But if you had something that was floating, then only the lower half would be displacing it. And so the volume displaced and the volume of the object are not the same thing. So, so you got to be careful here which one we're talking about. So in this case, we're talking about the fluid. So the density of the fluid, volumes of the fluid, this would then come out to be the same. All right. Hope those helped. Take care.